There's a new AI video tool that is better than some of the paid options. Runway just announced a brand new motion brush feature, and there's a tool that automatically adds sound effects to your videos. This is your AI film news of the week. I want to kick things off by talking about a brand new video generation tool that is completely free. It's called Picverse, and the results are actually pretty dang impressive. The cool thing about this tool is it actually creates the videos in 30 frames per second, and you can upres them to 4K without having to send them into an external tool like Topaz Video. So let's take a look at some of these examples here. So we have like this shot of a woman just looking at the camera, this shot of a train coming into a station, which frankly looks pretty dang realistic. We have this shot of what looks like a spacecraft window. And the cool thing is you can see there's that parallaxing with the clouds. So there's many fantastic examples of Pixverse that you can check out. I want to show you how easy it is to actually use their program. All you have to do is go to their website and click get started on the web and sign in to the account. So they have an explore page right here where you can check out some of the videos that other people are generating. We'll go to create. So this is your creation window and like many of the other tools, you have the ability to type in a prompt, like we could say a giraffe at sunset. You can add in negative prompts. So, you know, no morphing, no distortion, no variations in lighting, things like that. And then there are a few styles that you can select from along with aspect ratio. So I've actually already created a video of a giraffe at sunset, and I'm going to go ahead and play this for you here. Again, this video was text to video. So this was not using an input image. So let's take a look at the example here. So you can see that there's clearly something wrong with these giraffes and their legs are like morphing. And generally speaking, I'm not loving the results that we're getting from Pixverse using text to video at this point, but I do love the image to video. So let's take a look at that. To do image to video, you just go back to create and then go to image to video. So now you have the opportunity to add in an image. So I actually created a series of images inside of Midjourney, downloaded the images, and now I'm going to upload them inside of Pixverse. So now that our image is uploaded, we can type in a prompt. I'll say a giraffe eating food, and you have the ability to change the seed number and the strength of motion. I like turning the strength of motion up to about 0.7. I find that that kind of gives you the best overall uh, movement generally, but of course it depends on what your shot specifically is. And then all you have to do is hit create. The cool thing is whenever you hit create, uh, you actually have the ability to render up to four videos at a time. And again, this is completely free. There's not a paid version of this tool just yet. So once you're done creating a video, you'll see all of your video examples inside of your My Videos page. And you can simply click on any of the pieces of footage that were created. We'll say this one. And there's this button right here that says Upscale. If you click that Upscale button, it will actually interpret that footage, which is natively in about a 600p format, and it will upscale it to 4K automatically. You don't have to download it and re-render it in a tool like Topaz Video. So I actually created a demo of the upscaled footage from Pixverse. Again, I didn't do any other post-processing to this footage. I added a quick little VO and some music. Let's take a look. Behold, the giraffe, a bold and majestic animal. Giraffes are the epitome of grace with their... Oh, God. That one was missing a head. Um... Okay, I'm a little disheveled now. Giraffes love to eat. Ah, oh, never mind. I'm too distracted now. At least that one is cute. Oh, great, now there's a tiger. Maybe he's the culprit? So as you can see, Pixverse is not perfect. There, of course, is areas for the tool to improve, but it's pretty darn good, especially considering that it just dropped on the market. I highly encourage you to check out Pixverse. You'll find a link below this video. And that brings us to our game of the week. So I created three videos in three different tools, and essentially I want you to tell me which one of these videos was created in Pika Labs, which one was Runway, in which one was Pixverse. The first person to get the answer right will win some merch from Curious Refuge. So let's take a look at example number one. Example number two. And example number three. 
If you think you know the answer, let us know in the comments. Also, a big shout out to Adina Tricks for winning last week's competition. There's also a new tool called Sonic Vision LM that basically allows you to automatically create sound effects for a video. Now, it is a white paper, and so in order to use this tool, there's some code, it's a bit advanced to get it going on your machine. But I think it really does highlight the future of basically being able to go into a tool, upload your footage, and get a rough soundscape for your film. So there's some pretty cool examples inside of the demo. Like for example, we have this guy hitting this Trader Joe's bag. I mean, it seems pretty darn realistic. And there's actually some interesting examples from real world films. So we have first Leon the Professional. And one from Titanic. So there you go, those are some pretty interesting results. Now, obviously we are in the early stages of this tool, but I can't imagine that pretty soon you will be able to upload footage and get realistic sound effects that sound pretty darn good. Last week, we also launched a brand new course at Curious Refuge called AI Advertising by Dave Clark. Dave is an industry legend and his work basically goes viral every single week. He has decades of experience in the ad agency world, working with brands from Snapchat to Pepsi. And in this course, Dave and I have teamed up to show you how to use AI to create advertisements and marketing campaigns using the latest tools. The beta session will go on sale on January 31st and the course will officially start on March 5th. Now, there are already hundreds of people interested in this course, so it will likely sell out. So just be sure to sign up on the wait list to get notified when the course immediately goes on sale. We also dropped a new podcast yesterday with Dave Clark, where we talked about some of his viral successes and what his strategy is whenever he's working on an AI project. It's a really great talk. You can find the link below this video. Runway also announced a brand new motion brush feature that allows you to have up to five different motion brushes inside of your scene. There's some pretty cool examples online from people like Nicholas Newpert and Ane Akash. Let me show you how to use this new motion brush tool. So all you have to do is go to start with image. I will select an image from our assets, but of course you can just drag and drop to upload an image. I created this inside of Midjourney. So now we can go in here to our motion brush. And before all we could do is use one motion brush to basically change our scene. Now we can use up to five. So it's really, really cool. So for this scene, I think I want her hair to move. So I'm just going to select her hair here and We'll turn up the ambient motion to maybe about five. And now we can go to motion brush number two. And let's say we want her clothes to move a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of outline her clothes here. And we'll turn up the ambience just a little bit. So maybe like two. And now we can go to brush number three and brush the background. So I'll just quickly brush the background here. And we can turn the ambient motion to about five as well. And so the cool thing is we can actually go in here and change the overall movement as well. So we can go to our hair and let's say we want it to move to the left just a little bit, just, you know, to have it breezing in the wind. And we'll go ahead and hit save and we can add in a prompt here. So we'll say a woman standing in slow motion, abstract morphing background. And of course we can go in and adjust camera controls. I'm not going to do that for this example and we'll click generate. Okay, so let's take a look at our result. So we have this woman standing here looking at the camera and you know, her hair is blowing in the wind. The clothes are moving just a little bit. The background has this abstract shape. Now, the cool thing is we can go in and adjust this even further. So if we don't like, let's say the background moves too much, you can turn down the ambient motion without adjusting the movement on the hair or the clothes. So that overall movement will stay locked in but we can adjust our scene as we see fit. So this tool is really powerful and I can't wait to see even more examples of it in action. And speaking of Runway, they will be hosting their second 48 hour film competition on February 5th. The first one was absolutely incredible and they've upped the bar for this one. The winning person or team will win $5,000 and there's also an audience favorite that will win $5,000 as well. 
and the winners will also receive 1 million generation credits that they can use inside of Runway. And on that note, the Curious Refuge team will be launching our own AI filmmaking competition very soon. That will be our biggest one yet. We can't wait to share the details with you. Be on the lookout for that very soon. I'd also like to give a quick thank you to Pika Labs for inviting me to do a quick workshop inside of their Discord channel. They're hosting some live streams from time to time. You can check out their Discord channel to see when the next live streams are happening. Nick St. Pierre also shared this last week a really interesting use of the tile function inside of Midjourney. So basically, Midjourney does have the ability to create equa rectangular photographs. So that's a photograph that's used for 360 imagery. And using the tile tag, you can actually make it to where both ends perfectly align. Basically, all you have to do is create an image in Midjourney, upres it using a tool like Magnific, and there you go. Now you have a 360 image that you can preview. Let me show you how it's done. We're going to hop over to Midjourney, do forward slash imagine, and we'll say equi rectangular photograph of a modern apartment in Paris. And we'll make sure that we have the aspect ratio set to two by one and dash dash tile so that the edges line up with themselves. So when you do tile, the left and right side will perfectly line up, which is very important. So let's go ahead and create our result. Okay, great. So we have four examples here. I'm just going to pick the one that makes the most sense. I'll pick number one. So we'll up res number one and download it always when you're downloading, open in a browser and then save to your computer. Now we'll go over to Magnific and we will drop in our image. And for this one, I'm going to times four upscale. We'll keep everything base for now and then click upscale. And while we wait, we can take a look at this image I upresed earlier using Magnific. Basically, Magnific just goes in and adds in more details to make the overall image more realistic. This is really important for making your scene believable. And whenever you put on those VR goggles, the images that you see are much more realistic if you use a tool like Magnific. Now, there are some problems that can happen in the edges whenever you use Magnific to upres. So that is one of the limitations of using this tool. So if you ever run into an issue like that, I do recommend going over to Photoshop to clean up those edges. Okay, cool. So now we have an image. You can see this is our before. And this is our after, much more realistic. So we'll go ahead and download that to our machine. There's a link below this video to a tool that basically can allow you to preview 360 images inside of your browser. I'll just grab our image that we upresed and drop it in. And so now we can explore our virtual world here. So let's take a look around this apartment and you can see that, yeah, it looks like a Parisian apartment. It actually looks like a 360 image from those like home tour tools that are inside of Zillow. And you know, you can look around this apartment and check it out. There's even a reflection in the mirror, which is just absolutely crazy. And yeah, we have pillows on this couch. Now, is it perfect? Of course not. There's definitely room to improve, but the fact that this 3D world never existed and now we have a high res version of it is really interesting, especially when you're thinking about the future of generative AI as it relates to VR entertainment. Now, there's another tool called Skybox AI that we've showcased on this show that does a very similar result, but I thought this specific workflow was really interesting. And I'm sure we're going to see many more instances of 3D worlds generated from artificial intelligence this year. Leonardo AI also came out with the ability to do real-time AI in painting. And this is the first iteration of that specific feature that I've come across. I think it's pretty darn cool. Let me show you how to use it. So we'll go to Leonardo's website and we'll go to real-time canvas. So I like that gray couch in the Parisian apartment. Let me see if I can quickly put one together here. I'll time-lapse so you don't have to follow me this entire time, but let's just quickly create a rough sketch of a couch. And now we have this couch here. And the cool thing is we can now go to this in paint feature and now paint directly over the couch. So at first, all we have to do is go in here. Let's just say we want a yellow pillow on the couch. I'll just go to yellow here and we'll just paint in yellow. And you can see that nothing is really happening. Well, if we type in what we want to see, then it will be in your scene. So we'll say a yellow pillow. And there you go. The yellow pillow appears right on the couch. We can do the same thing over here. So let's add in another yellow pillow. And now we have two yellow pillows inside our scene. We can right click and save this image to our computer. 
and use it on whatever project we want. So I think this specific tool is going to be very helpful for concept artists in the future because obviously you can roughly sketch something and it will create a high res version of your sketch, but then having the ability to go in further and customize and really get the scene to be exactly what you want through prompting is a very unique and creative use of this technology. And so the folks at Leonardo are doing some really cool things. A team from Switzerland put together a really interesting demo of a tool they are working on in collaboration with Google, where essentially you can add in 3D objects to a Gaussian splatted scene. So this is a scanned 3D environment and you can place a 3D object in that scene just by painting. So this is like in painting inside of tools like Midjourney or Photoshop but in 3D. And the cool thing is you can actually walk around that object inside of 3D space. So that has huge implications for the future of AR and VR entertainment. There's some really interesting demos over on their website where they basically composited in things like butterflies and ottomans and cups into the overall scene. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. There's a long way to go but it is really darn impressive. Once you get some compositing passes onto these generations, the results are going to be absolutely breathtaking. There's also a new tool that basically allows you to scan somebody and place them inside of an image with a lot more accuracy. So it's really interesting and it's completely free. It basically is connected to Stable Diffusion and allows you to create your own LoRa model almost automatically. So all you have to do is drag and drop images. You can use one image if you want, but more images are better. I uploaded just 10 images of my face that I just took little selfies very quickly and uploaded them to the tool. So you can see we have this example that I generated earlier of me as a 3D animation character. I think it looks kind of like me. It's not exactly like me, but I mean, not bad for an AI tool. So for this example, I'm going to say a man with the IMG tag that will basically tell the tool to recall my face in the woods, realistic shot on film. Basically, we want it to be realistic. And we can go in here and set specific styles. We'll say cinematic since we're trying to go for cinematic realism, but there are many different styles that you can go in and mess with here, fantasy art, comic books, things like that. And we'll click submit. Okay, cool. So the image was created and you can see we have basically it kind of looks like me in the woods wearing a hoodie here. And we have another image here and my eyes are basically completely crossed. But I do find it to be really interesting that you can generate an image with your specific face so easily. So you're not having to get into stable diffusion and train all these custom models and do all that hyper technical stuff that can be quite challenging for day to day creatives to accomplish. You can actually just use this specific tool to generate imagery with the subject that you need. So you can play around with this tool by clicking the link below this video. I would love to see some of the clones of yourself that you're able to create. A research team from South Korea came out with a new tool that basically allows you to do style transfers. Now, this is different from other tools like Runway Gen 1 that completely changes the style. This one specifically allows your overall footage to remain the same it just changes the lighting and style of the footage to match a specific reference image that you input. So in some of these examples, they'll go in and change the color of flowers or the lighting of an overall scene. So I think this is a very interesting and practical use case. Essentially, you're able to relight and restylize your scene even further. I imagine that whenever you integrate AI tools like this with traditional color grading software, people inside a post-production workflow are going to have more control than ever before. I also came across this really interesting example of a Gaussian splatted scene that was generated from just three images. It looks like a almost photorealistic apartment. Of course, there's some distortion, but the scan is really interesting and it got the team thinking a lot about what the future of recreating environments is going to look like, especially when you consider historical events where maybe there was some photography, but no footage where people could actually capture kind of what the overall essence of this space was like. Well, it seems like in the future, we might be able to walk around in old environments using tools like this one. There's also a motion capture tool that I want to show you. It has a lot of really interesting features. It's called Motion. And it's been around for a while, but they did release a few new features this week that I think you should know about. So they kind of build themselves as this all-in-one tool that allows you to prompt in motion or upload footage and get motion in return. So for example, if we typed in reading, 
we could actually get a 3D character reading a book with fairly realistic motion. We can also do the same thing with a guy speaking at a seminar. So we have this guy and he's just being really expressive with his body language. And I came across this one. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. This is a person jumping out of an airplane. It's so good. It's a person being a plane, but I'm not seeing a lot of jumping out of inside of that generation. Now, they also have motion capture, which is really interesting. So in this example, we have this woman who is dancing. Very typical AI demo, right? And then we have the video motion capture here. And you can see that that video motion capture is really good. So it does rival some of the best motion capture tools out there like Move AI. And we also have some motion capture from some 3D animation. So we have this character running here. And then we have the motion captured result, which looks basically just as good. So it's really interesting to see the results here. Of course, you can download the FBX files and take them into 3D applications, which is cool. And they're also beginning to experiment with actually prompting in a scene and having a 3D character interact with that 3D animation movement. So we have this video here of Nikola Tesla dancing, and you can see that he's just doing a perfect Gangnam style here. So you can see how this specific tool, especially whenever the 3D model generation and the image bases get even better, is going to be a huge part of animation in the future. And again, tools like Midjourney are looking to do 3D models very, very soon. So I imagine we will see many more instances of tools just like this one hitting the market in the coming months. And that brings us to our AI films of the week. So the first film I want to shout out is called Urban Melancholy by Julie Designs. Julie did a great job with the green color grading that kind of has that vintage aesthetic. And we'll actually have Julie on the podcast very soon and we will more than likely ask her about this project. The next film I want to highlight is called Sister of Battle, created by Brett Stewart. It really does feature some of the most sharp and photorealistic AI renders that I've seen up to this point. And I was so inspired by the work that Brett did that I actually reached out to him and asked him some of his secrets. And he was kind enough to let me share that with you with a video tutorial that we will drop next week. So I can't wait to share how you can get really nice crisp, high resolution AI video from AI generation tools. The next film that I want to shout out is called Borrowing Time, and it was created by the instructor of our AI advertising course, Dave Clark. Dave did what I think is the best example of an AI generated film concept. Essentially, it's this really interesting example of a sci-fi time travel film that also takes place in this segregation area and kind of follows the pattern of racism inside of the United States. I think it's a really interesting concept for a film and I can totally see this project being greenlit and created inside of Hollywood. There are some really cool examples of visual effects inside of this project, so I think Dave knocked it out of the park. And our student project of the week comes to us from a student that goes by Prompt Try Repeat, which I think is a funny and very suiting name for someone who works in AI video. And they did a really great job at creating an AI fashion film that features consistency and a good shot selection. So fantastic job on this project. Thank you so much for watching this episode of AI Film News. You can, of course, get AI Film News directly to your inbox by subscribing over at CuriousRefuge.com. And if you're interested in our new AI advertising course, you can click the link below this video and sign up for the waitlist. That will drop on January 31st. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.